special meeting of the uh, Syracuse Union High School District. Let's go ahead and do the pledge and lead us. Mr. Ferris. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You can join me in a moment of silence. Moving to item one, adoption agenda and concurrent agenda. Dr. Ostash, any changes? Mr. Johnson, I have several changes for, for the board and the community, so I'll list them all off here. Uh, we have sp uh, several special concurrent items to insert into the regular agenda. We will hear the special item 3.1 after regular item 6.2. We'll hear special item 2.1 after regular item 8.4. We'll hear special items 5.1 and 5.2 after regular item 10.1. We'll hear special item 4.1 after 11.5. And we'll hear special item 6.1 after 13.10. And one other uh, action I'd like to take is to pull item regular, uh, I pull regular item 11.2 off the agenda tonight. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ostash. Uh, we want to approve of minutes of the special meetings of June 23rd and June 21st, 2022, and the regular special meetings of June 16th, 2022. Any changes? Get a motion. Okay, let's move on to there's no programs or presentations, no public hearings. Uh, number five, reports and communications. Uh, Dr. Austin, I actually go board members first. Anything from the board? Anything? Okay, nothing from okay, me. Okay, my turn. Dr. Austin. Okay, thanks Mr. Johnson. Uh, several items to announce. One is that we uh, concluded the year with our month, month 10 enrollment with uh, almost 5,000. We had 4,984. Last year at this time we had 4,872, so we ended the year up 112 students uh, from the year before. I also want to announce uh, to the public that the November 8, 2022 consolidated general election, that the, uh, the window or the period of time for circulating nomination papers and filing for declaration of candidacy for election posi or elected positions is July 18, which of course has already started. So July 18 through August 12. This of course includes uh, those who might be interested in serving as a trustee member on, on this year SANS board. There will be three trustee positions that are four year appointments that will be included on the November 8 ballot. And for anyone who might be interested in uh, running for one of those three positions, the County of Kern Elections Division advises that he or she visit kernvote.com, kernvote.com. Uh, in the past, um, we've been made aware that uh, on occasion, the County of Kern would come over one day to um, outlying areas such as Ridgecrest to allow people to um, declare candidacy and submit paperwork here locally, but we've been told that that no longer is the case. And so those interested would, like I said, visit kernvote.com and uh, we'll need to make arrangements to go to Bakersfield for some, some filing of appropriate paperwork. I also wanted to highlight, um, every year I put together our, what we call our all hands letter, kind of a welcome back letter. And I'm looking forward to sending that out to all of our employees next week. I'll highlight for the board and for the community just some important dates that are coming up that we're excited uh, to host. On August 1, we will um, hold our new teacher orientation at the Kerr McGee Center. On August 2, we have our teacher optional work day. On August 3 and 4, we have professional development days that we're excited about um, providing training and professional development for teachers and possibly for some classified staff. I know we have um, I know Mr. Delbeck is working on the possibility of providing some professional development for uh, paraprofessionals. Um, August 5 is our first mandatory work day for all of our certificated uh, teaching staff. And uh, of course, we have a tradition where we have an all hands meeting where we invite all of the employees in our district 
to uh, sort of a convocation of sorts, a convening, and that will take place at the Kerr-McGee Center on Friday, August 5 um, at 8 a.m. Light refreshments will be served beginning at 7.30, uh, but the event will start promptly at 8, and uh, you know, board members are always uh, encouraged and invited to attend uh, that event and also to stop by and, uh, and say hi or participate in any of those events that, uh, that I described. Really excited about that. And then lastly, I just wanted to mention that I'm excited. Every year we um, have our, lead our annual leadership retreat, basically planning meetings. They usually are one to one and a half days. This year we're gonna try and fit it all in one day. We are holding uh, that leadership team retreat at Mesquite High School on Wednesday, July 27th. And so all of the, all of the team, approximately 30 administrators will all be together and we'll cram a lot of information into one day and uh, s some, some good food and some good collaboration. So with that, that concludes my report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Move on to uh, six education administration, item 6.1, approval to purchase two 20 foot storage containers for expanded learning opportunity program. Oh, we can do that, I'm sorry. At this, it's not in my, yeah, we can, we'll, we can roll screen in there. I got it right here, okay, <clears throat> sorry. At this time, we want to do uh, 5.3, communication with the public. The board will provide time during discussion of each agenda item for public, for members of the public to comment. At this time, members of the public may address the board on any item not on the agenda. Comments should relate to items of public interest within the board's jurisdiction. The law prohibits the board from taking action on items not on the agenda. If appropriate, your comments will be referred to staff for response. When addressing the board, please state your name at the podium and limit your remarks to three minutes. In accordance with the board bylaws, the board will limit the total time for public input to 30 minutes. Those wishing to address the board beyond the 30 minute time period may do so at the end of the uh, scheduled meeting and we'll open it on the back clock at 7 or 9. Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Scott, for keeping me in line here. Okay, move on to 6.1. Uh, approval to purchase two 20-foot containers for expanding learning opportunities program at Las Forest and Richmond Elementary School for the 22-23 school year. Mrs. Decker. Good evening, Vice President Johnson, <coughs> Superintendent Dr. Ostash, staff, board members, staff, and community. <laughs> the Expanded Learning Opportunities, or ELOP, program is the result of the 21-22 Budget Act and Assembly Bill AB 130 as amended by AB 167. Expanded learning means before school, after school, summer, or intercession learning programs that focus on developing the academic, social, emotional, and physical needs and interests of pupils through hands-on, engaging learning experiences. It is the intent of the legislature that expanded learning programs are pupil-centered, results-driven, including community partners, and complement but do not replicate learning activities during the regular school day and school year. Program requirements include providing no less than nine hours a day of programming when combined with in-person instructional time on all school days and nine hours a day of programming, programming during 30 intercession days. Program standards are to be aligned with the After School Education and Safety, or ACES program, including educational enrichment and literacy activities, snacks or meals, a program plan with training, integration with the school day and other opportunities, community collaboration, physical activity, fiscal accountability, and data collection to support the quality improvement process that is reviewed every three years. The 22-23 ELOT program will provide services for up to 80 students at Las Flores and 80 students at Richmond. The program requirements make it necessary to purchase materials and supplies to provide students with daily physical activities as well as educational enrichment and literacy activities. These materials will need to be stored at the school sites and space is limited. The storage containers will allow the program to provide a variety of activities to students and rotate them throughout the year. A 20-foot painted standard C-Van with a 6-foot roll-up door, including delivery, is $4,850. Two storage containers with tax will be a total of $10,500.25. The Expanded Learning Opportunities Program will fund the expense. 
it is recommended that the Board of Education approve the purchase of two storage containers for the Expanded Learning Opportunities Program at Las Flores and Richmond Elementary Schools for the 22-23 school year as presented. We have motion and second. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Any comments? Now we'll have a roll call vote. Mr. Rockwell? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Dr. Tout? Aye. Mr. Ferris? Aye. And a vote aye. So that passes. Move on to 6.2, approval of special or schools PLP program and licenses. Mrs. Sapko, Dr. Sapko. Harry's a doctor tonight. Good evening, Vice President Johnson, members of the board, Dr. Super, Dr. Ostash, superintendent, staff and community. Education codes 51745 through 51749.6 authorize districts to establish independent study programs to meet the educational needs of students. Per Assembly Bill 130 in the 21-22 school year, all districts were required to offer independent study. In the 21-22 school year, Sierra Sands Unified School District implemented multiple programs to best meet the needs of transitional kindergarten through high school students as follows, Bright Thinker, High School Suite, and a special education supplemental program, Acellus. Although the use of multiple programs met the needs of the students, access to a wider range of honors, advanced, and elective courses was limited. To offer a more cohesive and comprehensive independent program, multiple programs were researched. Schools PLP was selected as it offers a complete PK through 12th grade curriculum with the Agilix Buzz Learning Man Management System. Staff and students are familiar with the LMS as it was utilized successfully with the Bright Thinker and High School Suite programs. Schools PLP offers a core curriculum with access to the five major online learning programs. Program provides Bright Thinker and High School Suite, credit recovery curriculum, and an honors advanced placement curriculum. In addition, Schools PLP provides access to nearly 200 electives, including many STEAM, career readiness, and high interest courses offered by eDynamic and Pointful Education. Schools PLP will allow the district to offer a cohesive and comprehensive standards aligned independent study program for TK through 12th grades. In addition, the school's PLP is a more cost-effective approach to delivering the wide range of curricula required of a unified school district independent study program. The school's PLP quote of $41,800 supports approximately 80 student licenses and a $600 setup training and support for staff. The, so the source for the proposed expenditure is the district's general fund. It's the superintendent's recommendation to approve schools PLP as the independent study program provider. We have record of that. Okay. We have motion second. Any questions from members of the board? Dr. Howell. Yep. I, question. Uh, Dr. Savko, the more cost-effective approach, as I'm, as I'm listening to this, we're continuing to use many of the same things. Can you explain how this is more cost-effective? Thank you for the opportunity, yes. So, so when we had a buffet, if you will, we would consume this program and this program and this program. Um, that's what caused or was what resulted was higher cost. So what's interesting about schools PLP is a student doesn't have to necessarily share a license, like multiple students can be on a singular license and it's kind of like one access point to all of those courses, if you will. And so because of that, there's a reduction in cost. We estimated about $12,000 less than our cost last year with a piecemeal approach, although it was the best we could do last year. So in summary, it's a one-stop shop, if you will. You don't have three portals or four portals. You can go into schools PLP and they have their courses and then you can access Bright Thinker, et cetera. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions from the board? Okay. 
Got a motion second. Any questions from the public? All right. We'll have a roll call. Uh, Ms. Rockwell? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Dr. Howell? Aye. Mr. Ferris? Aye. And I'll vote aye, so all in favor? Okay, we'll move on to item 3.1 of the special concurrent. Uh, approval of contract with Addiction Treatment Technologies, LLC for Cure Solis. Mr. Delbeck. Vice President Johnson, member of the board, Superintendent Ostash, and staff and community members. Um, across the nation, student mental, mental health has become a priority, especially due to the aftermath of the recent pandemic. In 2019, more than one in three high school students experienced persistent feelings of sadness or hopelessness, a 40% increase since 2009. According for the Center to the Center for Disease Control, and prevention in 2020 when COVID-19 first began spreading across the nation, the CDE found that mental health related emergency room visits among children aged 12 to 17 increased 31% from 2019. In December 2021, US Surgeon Gen General Vivek Murphy, or Murphy issued a public health advisory on the mental health challenges confronting youth and a call to action to address what he calls an emerging crisis exasperated by pandemic and heart, pandemic hardships. While the need for mental health services has increased, increased the healthcare system remains challenging to navigate, particularly in rural areas. The district is seeking a contract with addiction treatment technologies for the implementation of Care Solis to guide Sierra Sands Unified School District community in navigating the healthcare system in order to secure proper mental health care for those in need. Care Solis is an online resource with a live 24 seven bilingual concierge team meant to assist individuals in finding local mental health related programs and counseling services, as well as guide families, <coughs> excuse me, through the processes related to insurance, provider availability, wait times and scheduling. Care Solis is a tool for school staff and families to connect with community-based mental health care resources and providers. The proprietary care navigation system taps into a vast database of mental health care resources to find carefully vetted local therapists and programs in minutes. In minutes. School district families and staff may access Care Solis services by phone or website at no cost. Care Solis does not require a name, address, phone number, or date of birth. All information entered on the Care Solis tool is completely confidential and securely stored. Financial implications, the annual cost of the district's subscription to Care Solis would be $17,850. It is recommended that the board approve the contract with Addiction Treatment Technologies Limited Liability Corporation as presented. Second. The motion is second. Any questions from the board? All right, a point of clarification, where, what are we funding it out of? Just it's coming through here. SELPA. Okay, just wanna but make sure that that's- it is accessible for all students and all staff. All staff, so- all, any, any community members as well. So if we have, you know, a aunt or someone who goes to school, um, they can, they, anyone in the Indian Wells Valley, like I said, it's very secure and it's very, you don't have to give a lot of information. Um, it's, and they're bilingual. And what they do is they'll, they'll take it from the phone call and they'll make three or four recommendations. And then through those recommendations, they do the follow-up call. So our counselors aren't on the phone calling, hey, you know, Dr. Ho, could you get back? And so um, last, we tried it for about three months last school year. And there's anywhere from 470 calls that they made on behalf of our families. And that was without really promoting it. Thank you for sharing about the pilot. That, that was kind of going to be my next question. So I appreciate you doing that. I think healthcare, getting that kind of mental health, in, especially in our community, has been a challenge for decades. So to come up with something that can make it easier is, is an excellent service. Thank it's you. It's also very embarrassing to the, you know, for people to call right. and to ask at their school. So this is a very nondescript way to just pick up the phone, call their number without giving any information. It's a great way to serve the community. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions from the board? If not, any questions from yeah, the board? Yeah, I've, I've got a question or two. Um, first, I, I want to say that, you know, this sounds like a great program. I'm, I'm very pleased that we're offering it. Um, 
how do they determine what their fee is? You know, because if, if it's coming out of SELPA, so that's sort of a, a community that, you know, we're anticipating might use this maybe more than others. Uh, but, uh, but it's open to everybody else. It sounds like if they don't ask any questions, it sounds like almost anybody in the planet can, <laughs> can log in and say they're with Sierra Sands and um, get into the system. So how do they determine that $17,000 is the right number if, uh, you know, the entire town might start calling? Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's based on our um, number of students, or ADA. You know, they average it out. And um, we've been on quite a few calls, and I'm familiar with this um, corporation. And they really, their sweet spot are school districts from maybe 2,000 to 10,000. And we fall right in that area. Um, while they will service bigger Riverside Unified and districts with 40,000, 50,000, they find that the their kind of like area is right between two and, and 10,000, and we fell right in there. And we're very, you know, the rural part of it is something that it's hard to, I don't know if any of you tried just to find any medical provider, especially when it's something where you're not sure if you have insurance or you're not sure how to access it. So, yeah. Um, Mr. Rockwell, it is based on our number of students, total students, but this is something that SELPA as a well-being and a mental health um, provider for our district wants to bring to all students and all staff. Great. Yeah, no, it sounds like an uh, awesome uh, service for the community. Thank you. Sure. As a kind of follow-up, as I think I kind of see one thing that Mr. Rockwell was talking about, how are we going to communicate this out? Great question. I, I was actually on the phone with them today. We're going to do through Parent Square, but mostly we want our counselors to work it. But you know, we'll have a, they have a whole press kit, and I'm not the most tech savvy, but with just their PDFs, we could send out. We'll probably send out before school starts a kind of introduction for parents, and then follow up because we know before school starts, parents get so much. Follow up at the end of August, and then you know, August is Mental Health Awareness Month, so it's a really good time for us to get it out but as far as getting out to the community um you know board meetings anywhere we can is where we'll do it thank you that's, that's kind of why i was asking appreciate it yes okay any more questions if not um call for a vote Ms. rockwell aye mr scott aye dr Hout? aye mr ferris aye and i vote aye okay move on there's no policy development this month move on to item eight Administration 8.1, certificated personnel. Through 8, 1, and 2. Sorry. Got a motion and second on 8, 1, and 2. All in favor, Mr. Rockwell? Aye. Ms. Scott? Aye. Dr. Hout? Aye. Ms. Ferris? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Okay, move on to 8.3. Waiver to request enabling the district to assign individuals in certificated positions without appropriate credentials. Mr. Ald. Vice President Johnson, members of the board, Superintendent Ostash, staff and community. <clears throat> Approval of the board three. is. Second. And motion and second. Any questions about it? If not, Ms. Rockwell. Aye. Ms. Scott. Dr. Hout. Aye. Ms. Ferris. Aye. Ms. Johnson, aye. Okay, move on to 8-4. Authorization to change uh, depart department title from food service to new child nutrition services on job descriptions and other district re records. Mr. Ald. <clears throat> the department responsible for providing nutritional services to our students has for many decades been referred to as the food service department. Accordingly, all documents, including board adopted job descriptions have had the department name food service included. Recently, the supervisor of food service approached the assistant superintendent of business to request that the name of the department be changed to child nutrition services. The rationale for the request aligns with the many ways in which the department has evolved over many years. Specifically, the new name encompasses the department's core mission. After consulting with district's legal counsel, it was determined that the superintendent has the discretion to change the name of the department without needing board approval as such, the superintendent made the name change official as of July 1, 2022. When consulting with the district's legal counsel, we were advised that although the board did not need to take action to change the name, there were some housekeeping items 
that would need to be addressed. Specifically, since all of our job descriptions were approved by the board, we need board approval to change the name on the job descriptions. We are not required to bring each individual board item back for approval. Instead, the board can vote to have all job descriptions and any other district records regarding what was formerly called food services changed to child nutrition services. There are no financial implications. It is recommended that the board approve the name change from food service to child nutrition services on job descriptions and other district records for the food service department. Motion to second. Any questions of the board? I have a question. So, if we don't approve this, you can't hire anybody new for the community. Yeah, that's that's true. You can't hire any, you can't hire any food service people. Do you, do you feel powerful? Do we it's feel powerful? the <laughs> it's the I, wrong I, wrong time of year not to be able to hire people. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, I just have one question. Is you there didn't any? Find that funny? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> do we have any administrative regulations or policies that address food service in the title that we have to change? Just, just something to think about. If we're going to yeah. change it, we need to kind of make it across the district. So, I don't know if we, I don't know if we do or not. We probably well, do that, somewhere. That's why we included job descriptions and any other district records. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what how many yeah. things it affects, and I'm sure we're going to come across something. <laughs> okay. I do, I do that this I do that this summer. <laughs> I go to Gamut and say search all. That's what I got to do. So, any questions from the public? Okay, we do, a roll, we do a vote, Mr. Rockwell? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Mr. Dr. Houck? Aye. Ms. Ferris? Aye. Ms. Johnson? We'll move on. Aye. <coughs> so we'll move on to 2.1 of the special concurrent, a creation of additional six-hour classified library specialist position at Burroughs High School, Mr. Ald. <clears throat> the district is required by California Education Code to recruit a highly qualified certificated librarian for Burroughs High School. Like most districts in California, it has been very challenging over the years to find and retain a librarian. This has also been a, there has also been a six hour classified library specialist position at the high school to assist the certificated librarian. During those school years when the district was unable to hire a certificated librarian, we had negotiated with CSAA and its chapter 188 to increase the hours of the classified library specialist position from six to eight hours. The district was able to hire a certificated librarian during the 2021-22 school year. Therefore, the temporary eight hours classified library specialist position was not necessary. As has been the practice in the past, one classified library specialist, which was six hours, remained to support the, certir the certificated librarian. However, this year, the certificated librarian was needed to teach a section of English language arts, which created time in the middle of the school day when the library would not be covered. As such, it was determined that the classified library specialist needed to be extended to an eight-hour position. Per the collective bargaining agreement with CSEA and its chapter 188, article six, hours, section B, an employee who is assigned to work a minimum of 30 minutes per day in excess of a part-time assignment for a period of 20 consecutive working days or more shall have the basic assignment changed to reflect longer hours. Therefore, the original classified library specialist position that was previously six hours has permanently become an eight-hour position. The district is unable to hire a highly qualified certificated librarian for the 22-23 school year. So that the school library is appropriately staffed, it is necessary to create an additional six-hour classified library specialist position. The financial implications are approximately $19,330 annually, which does not include statutory benefits. It's the superintendent's recommendation the board approve an additional six-hour classified library specialist position at Burroughs High School as presented. Do we recommend it actually? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Incidentally, I, I would share that the certificated librarian that we had in place for 21-22 is still with us. However, she's completing coursework that has to be done before she's permitted to do it permanently, which she intends to do during this school year as she teaches English, so that next year we'll again have a certificated library specialist. Okay. We'll call for a vote. Mr. Rockwell? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Dr. Out? Aye. Ms. Ferris? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. We'll move on to 
9.1, general administration, report to the board nature of resolution complaints with regard to deficiencies related to instructional materials, emergency or urgent facility conditions that pose a threat to the public, to the health and public safety of pupils or staff, teacher vacancy or misassignments as required by Williams Act. Vice President, President Johnson, since there are no complaints, I would recommend that we just accept the report. Okay, any questions? If not, move on. 9.2, gifts to the district. Mr. Ferris. The following gifts were received. Altrusa International of Indian Mills Valley donated Dutch Brothers gift cards for a cash value of $100 to the DBIS program at Mesquite High School. Floyd and Dana Castillo <coughs> made a donation, cash donation of $500 to the Amy Castillo Covert Scholarship Foundation at Mesquite High School. And Patricia Jeglum donated an English German language book with an estimated cash value of $5 to be used for the German class at Burroughs High School. Donations provide support to the district and have a positive financial impact, and I move we accept them. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any questions? If not, call for the vote. Mr. Rockwell? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Dr. Hauk? Aye. Mr. Ferris? Aye. I vote aye. Move on to <coughs> 9.3, appointment of student board member, student member to the Board of Education for the 22-23 school year. Dr. Ostash. Thank you. In accordance, with board policy, candidates have been solicited to serve as student members of the Board of Education for the 22-23 school year. Should say, as serve as a student member. Uh, student Regina Seffi is being presented tonight for recommendation for the fall semester. Very proud to make some uh, share some highlights about Regina. She just completed her junior year at Burroughs High School where she participated in honors and AP coursework. Her cumulative weight weighted GPA is 4.6 and her unweighted GPA was 4.0 throughout high school. She has participated in sports, most notably wrestling, for which her team received the CIF 2021-22 Academic Team Champion Award. I remember us talking about that at a few meetings ago. She made it to CIF in 21-22 and plans to continue wrestling uh, this next season. She has participated in swimming, track and field, and was part of the CSF freshman a year. She feels the student board member position will provide an opportunity to become more involved in school and the community and looks forward to serving as the ASB Commissioner of Communications in 22-23. Uh, I recommend that the Board of Education appoint Regina Seffi as the student member to the board for the 22-23 school year. Any questions? A motion a second. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? I, I I got. I just have one, and okay. I don't know if this is more appropriate at uh, at the uh, future agenda items. But uh, we, I'm curious, looking at the pedigree of our new uh, board member, assuming this passes, um, I'd be interested in discussing at at some point um, if uh, attendance at the um, CSBA meeting for our student member might be appropriate. So, just a suggestion. Over. Thanks. Any more questions from the board? Any questions or comments from the public? Call for a vote. Ms. Rockwell? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Dr. Hauk? Aye. Ms. Ferris? Aye. And I vote aye. We move on to uh, 10, Construction Administration, 10.1, uh, approve the payment to City of Ridgecrest fees for Gateway Street improvements required for the new Richmond Elementary School project. Mr. Poit. Doesn't sound like that microphone's on. Right, well, I'll get right on top of it, okay. <laughs> the district is in the process of applying for a grant from the Department of Defense, Office of Local Community Cooperation, for the replacement of the Richmond Elementary School. It will be necessary to make improvements to the Gateway Street as part of the construction process. As part of the construction of the new school, it will be necessary to grind, repave, restripe Gateway Street to create a cul-de-sac at the north end of the sidewalk, curb and gutter, and to construct sewer connections and drainage channels on the Gold Canyon side of the street. The city requires payment of inspection and plan check fees prior to construction. 
the amount of the inspection and plan check fees are $13,961.86. This will be funded by Fund 40 capital outlay. It is the superintendent's, it is recommended that the board approve the payment of the City of Ridgecrest fees for Gateway Street improvements required for the new Richmond Elementary School project as presented. A motion second. Any questions from the board? Mr. Just, Ferris? just a comment. I guess it's kind of exciting to see physical stuff begin to happen. Okay. Any questions from the public? Any comments? Now call for vote. Mr. Rockwell? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Dr. Out? Aye. Ms. Ferris? Aye. And I vote <coughs> aye. Okay. Move on to number two adoption. Actually, one. Actually, yeah, we need to go to the concurrent, special concurrent, 5.1 and 5.2. So 5.1, approval agreement with Colombo Construction Company Incorporated for the addition of a student restroom to the existing relocatable classroom at Pierce Elementary School, Mr. Coit. The full day kindergarten facilities grant program was established by Assembly Bill 1808 in 2018 to provide funding for facilities necessary to support full day kindergarten programs in California schools. Assembly Bill 130, which passed in 2021, expanded the implementation of transitional kindergarten with the goal of achieving universal eligibility for four-year-olds by year 2025-2026. AB 130 also expanded full day kindergarten facilities grant program to include preschool and tra transitional kindergarten funding eligibility. To be used as a TK classroom, there must be a student restroom located in the classroom. Previously, the board approved an agreement with Colombo Construction Inc. for small construction projects on the condition that the specific projects and the associated cost estimates be brought to the board for approval. In order to support a potential increase in the number of TK students, the district plans to add a student restroom to an existing relocatable classroom at Pierce School. This will allow the classroom to serve as a TK classroom if needed. The district requested a proposal from Colombo Construction Services associated with a modification of the classroom. Financial implications, the proposed cost for these services is on a not to exceed basis is $40,000. This will be funded by Fund 40 capital outlay. It is the superintendent's recommendation that the board approve an agreement with Colombo Construction Inc. for the addition of a student restroom to an existing relocatable classroom at Pierce Elementary School as presented. Move the recommended action. We have a motion and second. Any questions from the board? Any questions or comments from the public? Call for a vote, Ms. Rockwell? Aye. Ms. Scott? Aye. Dr. Howe? Aye. Ms. Ferris? Aye. And I vote aye. Move on to 6.2 or 5.2. Adoption resolution 02-22-23 to enter an agreement with Elite Modular to extend a lease agreement for five re relocatable classrooms at Richmond Elementary School pursuant to the Savannah School District's district-wide contract number SSPU 4004-20. 2020 2021, Mr. Coit. The district experienced earthquakes in 2019 that seriously damaged Richmond Elementary School campus. To move the Richmond Elementary School staff and students to the VWIG Education Center, it was necessary to lease five relocatable classrooms from Elite Modular. The lease was for three years. It is now necessary to extend the lease agreement for an additional two years. Pursuant to contract code sections 10290 and 10298, the governing board of the school district may, without competitive building, bidding, contract with suppliers that have been awarded contracts, master agreements, multiple award schedules, cooperative agreements, or other types of agreements with state agencies that leverage the public, leverage the state's buying power for acquisition acquisitions authorized under specific sections of the California Public Contract Code. District staff received and reviewed a proposal from Elite Modular for a two-year extension to the current lease agreement. 
the proposal incorporates the terms and conditions established by the savannah school district district wide contract s s p u forty zero four twenty 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 one approval of rez of the resolution will enable the district to contract with elite modular pursuant to the terms of the piggyback contract as permitted by california public contract code financial implications the quote received from elite modular for the lease extension is one hundred thirty seven thousand one hundred fourteen dollars and forty cents at the end of that time dismantling fees are fifty thousand two hundred eighty seven dollars and sixty cents for a total of one hundred eighty seven thousand four hundred two dollars it will be funded by fund twenty five developer fees it is the superintendent's recommendation that the board adopt resolution o two twenty twenty two twenty three to enter into an agreement with elite modular to extend the lease agreement for five relocatable classrooms at richmond elementary school pursuant to the savannah school district district wide contract number s s p u forty o four twenty 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 one as presented second the motion second any questions from the board i, I just have oh, one couple. you and miss rockwell yeah um so it looks like we've timed this so that the um, relocatables will disappear once the new richmond is finished um but we we're talking about doing vwig we've got uh, potential other plans for the vwig campus is there a, a has, have we thought about that and do we need potentially those modulars to be there longer? So I, I'm just wondering if we've done this the most you know, cost efficient way um, for our future needs beyond uh, housing Richmond at Buick. So that discussion came up, uh, Mrs. Smith and I were talking about it when, when this, uh, we've actually got a couple more classrooms too that'll be coming up soon. So we're looking at our total number of leased classrooms, trying to anticipate how much longer we would need them. So two years from now is pretty clear if things move ahead with Richmond, we need those classrooms for two years. The out years are not quite as clear. Um, you know, the fact that we've been invited to propose on Pierce School uh, could change that. If that's the case, we would need keep the relocatables, not all of them, but some of them a little bit longer. Should it be VWIG school that we do something with next, I don't believe we would keep those relocatable classrooms because the area where they're at and uh, they just probably wouldn't fit in if we were to totally modernize that school. And it seems to be when we purchase a relocatable, by the time it gets to about the age 20 years, it's almost a demolish the thing rather than it, it loses its value very quickly, uh, especially with moving it. So when we lease these, the moving costs were built into the contracts. I mean, we've paid the delivery costs and of course they, they go away with the 50,000 and some change that's, that's in that. So uh, we can renew the lease for longer. We, we could do something different, but it, it was it's just that I think our decision was we, the safe thing to do is have them for two more years at this time until things become a little clearer um, just what the next project will be. So we're not locked into getting rid of them after two years. We could extend it if it made sense. No, there, there's more extensions available. Okay, great. Thank you. I, I just have one question. On the dismantling return fees, we pay that up front? No, I believe that's paid when we return it. We paid the setup fees. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I, I, if that's the case, we we've already paid that three years ago the first time, so I guess we're not going to pay it twice. No. Okay. Do that. Okay. So no more questions. Any questions from the public? Let's go call for a vote. Mr. Rockwell. Aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Dr. Hout. Aye. Mr. Ferris. Aye. And a vote. Aye. Move on to eleven. Business Administration, 11.1, .1, presentation of 45-day revision. Mrs. McGuire. Don't worry, Mr. Johnson. I have no intention of getting a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Your microphone. 
Oh, there's a little button there. Good evening, Vice President Johnson, members of the board, Dr. Ostash, staff and community. Annually, a school district's adopted budget is developed before the annual state budget of, is adopted. Education Code 42127 requires that no later than 45 days after the State Budget Act is signed by the governor, school districts must make available for public review any rev revisions to revenue expenditures that are made to their budget as a result of the changes in funding by the State Budget Act. For the 22-23 school year, the 45-day deadline is August 11th, 2022. A copy of this agenda item was posted on the district website for public review on July 19th, 2022. The board approved the 2022-23 adopted budget on June 23rd, 2022. The approved budget was based on the governor's May revise of the proposed budget, School Services of California and Kern County of Superintendent of Schools recommendations Due to the significant changes to the budget between the May revise and the state adopted budget, a 45-day revision is deemed necessary. The key differences between the SSUSD adopted budget for 22-23 and the 45-day revision are, beginning in 22-23, LEAs can use the greater of the prior year P280A current year P-280A, or the average of the three most recent prior years, P-280A. Proposed augmented COLA to the LCFF base of an additional 6.28% above the 6.56% used at budget preparation results in a total COLA of 12.84%. This provides an estimated increase of $3 million in LCFF funding. Included in the LCFF calculations, the Education Protection Account, or EPA, proportionate share will be calculated at the P2 certified apportionment of 73.317% for an increase of an estimated $7 million. That $7 million replaces state aid. It does not increase our total funding. Special education base rates are increasing to $820 per ADA. The governor's proposed one-time discretionary grant and the learning recovery discretionary block grant have been rejected, which results in a reduction of approximately $6.8 million. Replacing the above-mentioned grants are the COVID-19 Learning Recovery Emergency Fund at $5.8 million and the Arts, Music, in and Instructional Materials Discretionary Block Grant at 2.7 million. Proposed ongoing funding for home to school transportation costs is at 60% less the amount of the add-on already embedded in the LCFF calculation or approximately $800,000. There is no necessary action. This is presented for informational purposes only and all appropriate adjustments to the budget will be reflected at the first interim and will be reported in December later this year. Thank you very much for the information. Any questions from anybody? I, I just had a clarification question. Um, and not that it's a big deal, but I think I heard you say it was posted on July 19th and your text says the 14th. Fourth. I apologize. That's My it. copy may, it has XX oh, okay. and I was trying to remember <laughs> okay. what day she posted it. <laughs> okay. But we know it wasn't XX. No, it wasn't XX. <laughs> so I didn't want to say XX. <laughs> okay. Okay, any more questions, any comments? Comments from the public? So thank you very much for the information. We'll move on to 11.3. Approve an equity lease agreement with Enterprise Fleet Management for three Ford T350 passenger vans. Mrs. Smith. Good evening, Vice President Johnson, members of the board, Superintendent Ostash, community and staff. Um, if you guys are okay, I'll probably skip that first paragraph because you've heard it several times. Um, and go straight to current considerations if you're fine with that. So due to vehicle supply issues, Enterprise Fleet Management had not been able to obtain many of the vehicles that we had identified that we wanted to replace during the 2020-21 year. They are now able to obtain three T350 passenger vans. 
and the district wishes to lease these vehicles from Enterprise. These are the athletic vans for boroughs is what these will replace. Um, the existing vehicles will either be sold at auction or by the district at a future date. The financial implications are the delivery price of each is 49,717 for the total of 149,151 for a monthly cost of 964,16 each or 2892,48. And funding for this lease agreement would come from Fundo One General Fund. It is the superintendent's recommendation that the board approve an equity lease agreement with Enterprise Fleet Management for three Ford E350 passenger vans as presented. Move the recommended action. A motion and second. Any questions from the board? So do we, do we pay those monthly? Is that a monthly bill? Mm -hmm. Okay. And we just keep adding any additional cars that get, at least get added to the PO for the enterprise uh, monthly fees. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the public or comments? Call for a vote. Mr. Rockwell? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Dr. Hout? Aye. Mr. Ferris? Aye. And I vote aye. Move on to... 11.4, approval of declare Chromebook surplus and authorize the, dis the district to donate Chromebooks to the B-Mount Foundation for redistribution to qualified SSUSD students. Mrs. Smith. So administrative regulation 3270, sale and disposal of books, equipment, and supplies derived from California Ed Code section 17545 states that the governing board of a school district may sell for cash any personal property belonging to the district if that property is not required for school purposes or if it should be disposed of for the purpose of replacement or if it is unsatisfactory or not suitable for school use. Per Ed Code 1746, if the board by unanimous vote of those members present finds that the property is of insufficient value to defray the cost of arranging a sale, that property may be donated to a charitable organization deemed appropriate by the board. The technology department currently has, it's actually 1170 is the total, but we believe that we'll get a few more as they continue to replenish to the, to the maximum of 1,300 Chromebooks that were recently replaced as part of the district's Chromebook sustainability plan. Based on a six-year life cycle, the book value of the Chromebooks is between zero and $20 each. The district would like to donate the Chromebooks to the B Mountain Foundation, which would then redistribute the instructional technology to qualified SSUSD students who could utilize them for continuous learning opportunities. And how they would qualify is by um, submitting a household income form and qualifying as free on a household income form is how we would determine a student would be eligible for the opportunity to get one of the Chromebooks. There are no financial implications associated with this item. The property is of insufficient value to defray the cost of arranging a sale. It is recommended that the board declare the Chromebook surplus and authorize the district to donate the Chromebooks to the B Mountain Foundation for redistribution to, uh, to qualified SSUSD students as presented. Second. A motion and second. Any questions from members of the board? I, I just have one. So we, we have we have like 5,100 Chromebooks for all the students in addition to these 1,300, correct? Right. We have a, a recycle plan where right. every so many years we refresh them and then we dispose of the old ones, however we dispose of them. So this gives a family opportunity to have a second one at home if if their student can have one at school and one at home then. Or, okay. yeah, especially if they don't have, right. you know, computers at home, this right. would let them have them even when they don't have school Chromebooks. Perfect. It, it's not the first time. Yeah, I know I've got uh, uh, some from years ago. They're well, I know, still, I, I, still I know we, we were selling them for like 20 bucks a few years ago. Yeah. yeah that's, so, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's an awesome program. I just wanted to make yeah. sure that we still have one for every student that's in the classroom in addition to the ones that were cycling out because their license are good for what, five or six years anyways? And our ulterior motive is to incentivize people to turn in their household income forms early this year because then they would have that opportunity uh, perhaps to qualify for a Chromebook. Uh, too clever. So, so I, you, I, I have a question. <laughs> this, is a tech, this is a technology question probably for Mr. Morrison, but will these Chromebooks work on our LTE network that we're setting up in the city? Okay. Okay, so they'll be. Okay. Okay. So, so but they're on, they're on our LT, they only get to the content that we let them get to, correct? On our, on our LT, but if they hook to Wi Fi, then they're whatever they get to. Okay. Okay. So we couldn't hear, we couldn't hear uh, Mr. Morrison. 
can you uh, repeat what he told us there? Yeah, he's at the microphone now because he's up next. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Vice President Johnson asked if the Chromebooks would work on our private LTE network, and yes, they will, and those will be uh, filtered um, as well if they're connected to our private LTE. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? If not, we'll do a vote. I don't even vote it yet, have we? We'll go for a vote, Mr. Rockwell? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Dr. Hout? Aye. Mr. Ferris? Aye. And I vote aye. Move on to 11.5, approval to upgrade fire alarm systems at Monroe and Fowler. Mr. Morrison. Thank you, Vice President Johnson. So the Sierra Sands Unified School District's Technology Department is responsible for maintaining fully operational fire alarm systems at all of our district locations. In recent years, the Technology Department has struggled to maintain fully operational fire alarm systems at Fowler Elementary and uh, Monroe Middle School due to the age of the equipment, installation concerns, and availability, availability of parts. Uh, the cost to upgrade both schools to a fully functional system is $71,954 and will be paid through the general fund. It is the superintendent's recommendation to approve the contracts with A.J. Kirkwood and Associates uh, for both schools in the amount of $71,954. Move recommended action. Second. A motion second. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Call for vote. Mr. Rockwell? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Dr. Hout? Aye. Ms. Ferris? Aye. And I vote aye. We move on to special concurrent 4.1. Uh, approval to repair fire alarm control panels at BHS Pump House. Mr. Morrison? Yeah, another fire alarm uh, item here. Uh, Sierra Sands Unified School District contracts with Shambaugh and Sons to perform <coughs> annual fire sprinkler inspection and testing at all seven district locations that have a sprinkler system. That would be Burroughs, Gateway, Las Flores, Murray, Sierra Vista Center, Pierce, and the Buick campus. <coughs> During the 22-23 annual inspection, so just a few weeks ago, it was determined that the fire alarm control panel at the Burroughs High School pump house was failing and needed to be replaced. The cost to replace the control panel and reprogram the system is $24,962 and will be paid out of the general fund. It is the superintendent's <coughs> recommendation to approve the proposal from Shambaugh and Sons to replace and reprogram the fire alarm control panel at Burroughs High School Pump House in the amount of $24,962 as presented. <coughs> Second. A motion second. Questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Mr. Rockwell? Aye. For vote. Mr. Scott? Aye. Dr. Hout? Aye. Mr. Ferris? Aye. And I vote aye. At this time, we'll temporarily adjourn uh, the regular and special concurrent meeting to conduct the uh, Intercurrent Schools Finance Authority <coughs> Board of Directors. Uh, move on to adoption agenda. Any changes? Okay. I have two approval minutes of the regular meeting of June 16, 2022. We need to correct that. If not, we move on to item number three, business administration. Approval of the, the approval of the use of Intercurrent Schools Finance Authority funds. Mrs. McGuire. Good evening. In 1990, Sierra Sands Unified School District and Lone Pine Unified School District formed the Inyo Kern Schools Financing Authority, affectionately called ICSFA. As a result of this agreement, Lone Pine Unified School District agreed to make annual lease payments on the property leased from the authority by the Lone Pine Unified School District. The funds held at the Kern County Tax Collector are to be used for facility-related costs. This item is presented to provide an update on the status of the fund balance held at Kern County Treasury uh, Collector and request authorization to obligate funds to the district for appropriate expenditures. The district is requesting authorization to transfer funds from the ICSPA fund to Fund 01 General Fund for $85,000 for the 21-22 in lieu of facility payment to realms per the current settlement agreement and $9,000 for the underpayment of the settlement agreement for the prior two years. The district is also requesting authorization to transfer the remaining funds 
for approximately $1.8 million to fund 40 special reserve capital outlay for ongoing and future facility needs. Please see the attached in your current school's financing authority funding priority funding list, attachment A. It is recommended the Board of Directors approve the request to use in your current school's financing authority dollars for the related transfers of funds and expenditures outlined in the attached list, attachment A, in the amount not to exceed $1,894,000. So we recommended action. We have a motion and second. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Call for a vote. Mr. Rockwell? Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Dr. Help? Aye. Mr. Ferris? Aye. And I vote aye. At this time, we'll, we'll adjourn the extra meeting and readjourn the current or the, the regular and special concurrent board meeting. Move on to item 13. So it's going to be 13, 1 through 10, and special concurrent 6.1 on the consent calendar. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Actually, roll call. Yeah. Mr. Rockwell. <laughs> aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Dr. Hout. Aye. Mr. Ferris. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Scott's our parliamentarian tonight, so he's keeping me in order. <laughs> So move on to item 14, feature agenda items. Do we have any feature agenda items? Besides yeah, yours, no, Kurt? Yeah, just the other thing I mentioned is, you know, if we can start chipping away at, uh, you know, a little more effective with the use of our student member and uh, provide a, you know, phenomenal learning opportunity for, for that person on an ongoing basis, that'd be great. So whatever we need to do to make that happen, if it appears to be uh, appropriate this year, would be great. So as I understand, you want that to be a future agenda item. I would agree, and I think during that discussion, if we could be updated on where we are with the uh, uh, work that is being done at the high school to determine how this could best be, this position could best be served through that organization, that would be helpful. Yep. Thank and, and, and that's an awesome, that's a full time, that's a full year yeah, spot now yeah. too instead of just a half year like we've been the last few years. So. And I know we had a discussion specifically about right. what would entail for that, so that's kind of right. what I wanted yep. to update on. I agree. Okay. Any other future agenda items? Anything else, Kurt? Oh, well, that's good for me. Thank you. Okay. This time we'll move on to item 15, adjournment. Next meeting, regular scheduled board meeting is August 15th, 2022. Thank you all for coming. Have a nice evening. Hey, have a great night. Good night, Kurt. See you all later. <laughs>